Hey George. Hey. What? I think you have got one. Huh? Pull the rod when I say. Pull the rod. Pull it. Woohoo! Look at that. Look at the fish I've caught. Yeah. Wow, George. That's a big one. This is so big. <laughs> I think we have got enough for the day. Now let's take it home and ask your mom to cook it for us. Mom is going to be so happy today. All right. I will hold the fish. You pack your things and let's walk back. Father, in the class yesterday, you told us that Hosea experienced the pain of loving as God did. Why did you say that? That's because Hey, do you want to hear the story of Hosea as we walk back home? Yes, father. Tell us the story, please. All right. Now listen carefully. Hosea was the last prophet sent to Israel. He was a man who experienced the depth of God's love and the bitterness of betrayal. He lived at a time when the country was in a total mess. All the evils that Amos had warned the people of Israel about had now become widespread and was common everywhere. Murder and robbery had become very common. Poor were forced into slavery. Priests and judges instead of teaching the laws got greedy for profit and encouraged corruption. And against the commandments, God and the idol of Baal were worshipped in the same altar. One day at the palace, people were celebrating the coronation of Prince Zechariah, the people. O oh Lord Baal, Lord of fertility, accept our offerings and bless us. <sighs> I can't watch this anymore. Prophet to blame, why don't you say anything against this cruelty? I... I'm an old man. What can I do? Hosea, I'm heartbroken. Why are you crying, master? Do you see that woman dancing over there? Wow, she's such a beauty. But, but she's a prostitute. What about her? She? Huh? She's my daughter, Hosea. What? But how? How did she end up like that? The king and the priests are forcing all the beautiful women in the country into prostitution. She, she had no choice. And I could do nothing to help her. Oh no! Don't worry, master. Everything is going to be all right. Hosea! I want you to do me a favor, can you? What is it, master? Can you take her away from this place? Take her with you. Save her, please. Hosea didn't know what to say that day, but he sure knew what to do the next day, because that night, the very same night Prophet Diblaim asked him to rescue his daughter, God appeared to Hosea. Hosea. Huh? God? Hosea, go and marry the prostitute. Israel has become a prostitute by abandoning me. I will do as you say, my lord. Hosea was a firm follower of God. And the next day, he went to the temple to meet Goma, the daughter of Prophet Diblaim. Shh! 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 Goma! Huh? Goma, here. Who are you? I will tell you. Come with me to the gardens. All right. You go ahead. I have seen you before. You are priest from Samaria, isn't it? No, 
I'm neither a priest of Baal and I'm not from Samaria. Then who are you? My name is Hosea and I'm from Jezreel. Why are you here, Hosea? You, you are so beautiful. What are you staring at? Tell me why you are here. Listen to me very carefully. Goma, I love you. Love me? Ha! I'm the temple dancer. I don't care about that. I love you so much and I want you to come with me. But what? What are you saying? But don't you know that I'm a temple dancer? I'm a prostitute. I know, Goma, and I also know who made you like this. Those wretched priests and the king. Don't worry, God sees everything. No, it can't be. I have no life of my own. My life is ruined. Goma, Goma, listen. I have your father's blessings. Huh? Yes, let's get out of here. We will go to Jezreel, my home. Nobody will be able to find us there. No, it can't be. I have to go now. They'll be looking for me. Don't worry about that, Goma. Before they realize you are missing, we will be gone. You want to leave right now? Yes, right now. Come with me. I have a host ready. But, but I have to say a word to my father. Don't worry. I have already told him. That night, both of them fled to Jezreel. Many months and years passed. Many revolutions and war took place. Kings were killed and there were frequent change of power in Israel. The whole country was in an utter chaos. Streets were flooded with dead bodies. What Amos predicted was coming true. In the meantime, Gomer gave birth to a child. Gomer! Come on here. Take a look at our child. He is so beautiful. What are we going to call him? Have you decided on a name yet? Yes, we are going to call him Jezreel. What? Jezreel? But it's the name of a place. Yes, it was a place where Jehu the captain killed the king. I know that, but why that name for our son? Because the captain was unfaithful to his master. He should have loved him and protected him. But instead, he killed his own king. But, but... Don't worry, Goma. We Israelites have become like that captain. Instead of serving the Lord, we have turned our backs against him. Our son's name will remind us the condition of our home and the country. Hosea, please. No, Goma. I have decided. We are going to call our son Jezreel. It was God who asked Hosea to name the child Jezreel. The name reflected how sad Hosea was about the condition of his home. Hosea had become a very sad and grave man. He always prayed to God and was very serious all the time. Hey, look! It's Hosea! Yes! Hosea! Hosea here! Huh? What is it? Come here, Hosea. Let's chat for a while. Yes, come here. You are always looking so serious. I'm sorry, but I can't. I have to go somewhere now. Why? You want to go to another temple? What's the use of praying all day? Come sit here and have fun for a change. No, I can't. Hey, did you hear the name he has kept for his firstborn son? What is it? It's Jezreel. <laughs> but it's the name of a place, isn't it? This guy is crazy. Don't worry about me. I think you should stop ignoring your true God and worship Him instead of making fun of me. Are you saying that Baal is not the true God? You know it, who the God of Israel is. 
and yet you choose to ignore him. You are now running behind idol worship that's against God's commandments. Hey, Hosea, don't let the soldiers hear you talk like this. They will behead you if they hear you insulting our god, Baal. Yes, you can go away, my friend. We don't want to be seen along with you talking. Otherwise, we might get into trouble too. Yeah, go away. We don't want you here. All right, I'm going. People made fun of Hosea because he was always sad and serious. But Hosea was more worried about his God and his country. What Amos predicted was coming true. The kings were killing each other. A few days back, the military commander killed his own king and became the ruler of Samaria. Hosea's wife conceived and gave birth to a daughter. And that night... Hosea... God? Call her name... Loruhama, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. I will, Lord. Loruhama. Mother! <laughs> Come here, son. Look at your baby sister. Wow, she's so beautiful. <laughs> Isn't she? Daddy! Dear! My husband! She is really beautiful. We are going to call her Loruhama. What? No! I'm not going to name her that. We are going to call her Sara. No, we can't. You have to agree with me, my dear. But Loruhama? But why do you want to call her that? It's God's wish, my dear. It means no mercy. No mercy? Yes. God wants the people of Israel to know that He will show no mercy on them. He wants them to know that they would get the punishment they deserved. Hosea obeyed God's commands without a question. And in few years, Gomer gave birth to a second son. Call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Hey Hosea, what is it? I heard that you named your second son Loami. Yes, I did. Hosea, this is the strangest name we have ever heard. Why don't you call your bows Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or some respectable name like other folks? Hey. What do you mean by not my people? That's what God commanded me to do. And every time I call my child by that name, it reminds how the people of Israel pushed away our Lord God. It reminds me that we are no longer His people. <laughs> you are crazy, my friend. You should stop being so serious. It's because you are a loner that you keep getting such thoughts. So what do you want me to do? Go with you to your temples and worship Baal? Or do you want me to join you for drinking and wasting away my life? Hey, you need to stop worrying, my friend. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun sometime. No, I'm sorry, but I can't forget the Lord and ignore His commandments. One night, while he was sleeping, he had a dream. A vulture appeared in his dream, and he started following it. What? A vulture? A vulture over the house of Lord? What does it mean? Hosea, the people of Israel have broken my covenant. I am going to punish them according to the covenant. I will start with the priest who defiled my temple. You must go to Samaria immediately. The next day morning, Hosea left for Samaria as God commanded. Do you have to really go? You know I have to, dear. I must follow God's orders. But then what am I going to do with these three little kids? Daddy! How can I resist God's call? I don't understand you. I think, I think you're sick. Otherwise, how can your God be more important than your wife and children? Don't worry, 
you have enough to live. And besides, the neighbors are good too. They will take care of you. But... Trust in God and wait in patience. I will be back soon. <sighs> in a way, I'm happy that he's gone. Nobody can put up with his strange ways. He's always so sad. I'm fed up with this life. I used to have such a fantastic time. We had so much fun. Oh, I really miss those days. I should have never left the temple. After a few days since Hosea left his house, a soldier from Samaria came to Hosea's house. Who are you? Hello, Goma. Don't you recognize me? Huh? You know my name? I know you. Uh, you are... Uh, you, you are Simri. My goodness. <laughs> so you haven't forgotten me? How can I ever forget you? We used to have such a good time. Yes, we did. Come, come inside. Here, Simri, drink this water. Thank you. So tell me, what's the news in Samaria? Oh, it's been really dull since you left the temple. The new girls are not as good as you. Hmm, I miss those days. And your husband, Hosea? What about him? He is crazy. He is going around and cursing everyone like a madman. How can you live with a person like that? Why don't you come with me? Hmm, I'm tired of him. I would love to come with you. That day, Gomer left Hosea's house and went with that soldier. She was so cruel that she sold her children at the slave market and went on to live with that soldier. In the meantime, the rulers of Israel were planning to attack Judah and they were marching towards Jerusalem. The priests in the temple were offering sacrifices to ensure their victory over Judah. O oh God Almighty, please bless and strengthen our army marching against Judah. Stop it! Huh? Hosea, it's you? What's the matter? Judah is our brother and they are begging for peace. Are you offering sacrifices to destroy our own people? It's the king's order. We offer sacrifices for the good of the people. You offer your sacrifices to this peace made in gold. You forcefully take what belongs to poor. Hosea, watch your words. Don't you remember what happened to Amos? I'm not afraid. You consider the prophets mad and you silence them. And now you are threatening me. The day of the disaster is here. Get out of here. Guards, take him away. Leave me. Ugh. You defile the country with your crimes. The fire of God's wrath is coming from the north. It will purify this land. My house, what happened? It's all gone. What happened here? My wife, my children, where have they all gone? Hey, is it you, Hosea? Yes. Do you know what happened to my wife and children? Hosea, I'm so sorry to tell you this. After you left, your wife stayed around for a while. But one day, a soldier from Samaria came and she left with him. Goma, why did you? And my children, what happened to my children? Oh, Hosea, I didn't realize that Goma was so cruel. She sold her children in the slave market and she enjoyed with the money she got. She stayed with that soldier for two months. But then he got bored with her and he left her. Oh no! I heard she's a slave now somewhere. I'm sorry, Hosea. You must try to forget her. Oh, Goma, how could you be so cruel? How could you forget me after I saved you from that temple? You don't know how to be a faithful wife. And our children, how could you do that to them? 
Hosea was heartbroken. The person he loved the most had left him. He now truly understood the pain of God. He understood how it felt like when someone you loved turned their backs on you. Oh no, my kids, my darling. No, I'm not going to let her go. I'm not going to rest until I find you. You are mine. I'm coming for you. Hosea traveled for many days searching for Goma. He didn't rest and he went under a lot of pain. And one day, he finally learned that she was working at a house in Bethel as a slave. Hello, sir. Who are you? My name is Hosea. I heard that my wife Goma is working here. What? <laughs> so Gomer has a husband? I can't believe it. You may laugh as much as you want, sir, but I want my wife back. All right, all right. You can have her. No problem. But you will have to pay me. I'm ready to pay you. How much do you want? Give me 50 shekels of silver and I'll let her go. Hosea paid for Gomer's release and he released Gomer. Gomer! My husband! Dear, you're looking so miserable. I'm so sorry. I should have never left you. Come with me, dear, and never leave me again. No, I, I don't deserve such love. Don't say that. Our life is a symbol of Israel. All these happen to us so that the world can understand what Israel's sin is and our Lord's love for us. I have been taught a great lesson today. Israel is like an unfaithful woman. She went after other gods and idols, but our Lord will never abandon her. Even as I love you, in spite of all your sins, so does God love all his people in spite of their wickedness. So he learned the lesson that even when God is greatly displeased at us, he loves us and when we return to him, he will receive us. Wow! Wow! And what about their children? Did he get them back? Yes, he bought them back from the slave market and he got them home. That was a great story, father. You liked it? Yes. All right. Mm, this fish looks quite tasty. I'm hungry. I'm gonna start eating. No, no, wait. Let's finish with the questions and then we'll start, okay? Yes, father. All right. Now tell me who was Gomer's father? Gomer was the daughter of Prophet Dibley. That's correct. What was the name of Hosea's children? Lucy, can you tell me the name of his first son? Hosea's first son was named Jezreel. And why was he named that? Hosea named him after the place named Jezreel, where Jehu, the captain, killed his own king. That's correct, Lucy. And now, George, you tell me the name of his daughter. Hosea named his daughter Lo Ruhma, which meant no pity. That's correct, George. Can you also name his second son? His second son was named Lo Ami, which meant not my people. That's very good. That's all for today. We can start with the food now. Father, which story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Oh, yes. I will tell you the story of a farmer who rose to protest against the violence and injustice. The story of Mika. Now, let's stop talking and concentrate on the food now. I'm hungry too. Stop! Matthew, stop! Stop running, Matthew! No, I won't. Ha ha ha! Catch me if you can! We will catch you, Matthew! Give us the ball back, Matthew! <sighs> No, I'm not giving the ball. Jimmy, stop him! Ah! Ha ha ha! Jimmy, you, you! Thank you, Jimmy. You've got the ball now! But you didn't catch me. 
Oh, we could have caught you. But we thought we let you run ahead. Hello, kids. Huh? Father John? What were you doing here? What happened to you, Matthew? Nothing, Father. We were just playing. Hmm. Were you just playing? Or were you fighting with each other? No, Father. We were just playing. We don't fight anymore, Father. Yes, Father. We've not had a fight for a long, long time now. Hmm. That's good. Come on. Let's go and sit over there. Father, you said you will be telling us the story of Prophet Isaiah today. Do you remember that? Hmm. But before I begin, let me check if you remember the verse I taught you yesterday. The quote from Prophet Micah? Yes. Can you tell me that famous quote of Micah? It was, act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with your God. Wow, that's correct. So you do remember. Yes, Father. We remember everything that you teach us. Very good. All right. Now I'll start with the story of Isaiah, the prophet. The name Isaiah means God is salvation. Aptly to his name, Isaiah lived his whole life firmly believing that Lord God is the only way to salvation. A long, long time ago, in the kingdom of Judah, there lived a man named Isaiah. One day, as usual, he was going to the temple to pray. How beautiful is your temple, Lord! I feel so good every time I come here. Isaiah was praying as usual that day. He knelt down and closed his eyes to pray. But then, suddenly he had a vision. Huh? In that vision, he was given a deep awareness of the holiness of God. The vision also showed him his sins. Huh? No. I'm a sinner. I live among sinners. How am I going to live with this burden? God, please help me. Then suddenly, one of the seraphs flew to Isaiah with a burning call taken from the altar. Open your mouth. Now that this has touched your lips, all your sins will be washed away. Whom shall I send to proclaim my word? Here I am. Send me. Go and preach to the people. Even if they hear my words again and again, they still won't understand. Even when they see again and again, they still won't notice. They have hardened their heart. But still, speak to them. Isaiah was purified by God and called to proclaim his word. The newly gained awareness made him aware of the sins of the society in which he lived. He saw the poor and the weak were oppressed and exploited. He realized that the sacrifices and rituals were simply a show of human glory. Hey! Hey, look! Isn't that Isaiah, son of Amos? Yes, he is. But he looks... As if a lightning has struck him. Come, let's go talk to him. Isaiah! Huh? What happened, Isaiah? You look like a ghost. I... I saw something. What did you see? I saw a vineyard. Ha 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 ha! You got shocked by seeing a vineyard? Stop joking. Isaiah, tell me what happened. I saw a farmer working in a field. He tilled his land and planted choice wine in it. He then put up a fence around his field. In the middle of the field, he built a storage house and a vine press. The farmer was expecting a good yield of good grapes. The farmer waited and waited for many days. And finally, it was time for plucking them.
Yak! What's this? These grapes are sore! Was it for these that I worked for so long? Are you telling a story? Or explaining a vision? It doesn't matter. Isaiah, you continue. What did the farmer do? What would you have done if it were you? If it was me, then I would dig out the old wines and plant new choice wines. But the farmer had planted choice wines, didn't he? Well, Isaiah, tell us what the farmer did. The farmer got angry. He was upset that all his dedication and hard work to grow good, sweet grapes had failed. He had taken good care of his wines, nurtured them, watered them. But even after that, the grapes had turned sour. So he destroyed the fence and burned the house, so that wild animals could graze on his crops. Do you know what this means? I have no idea. You tell the meaning, Isaiah. Hmm, I'll tell you. The Lord God is the farmer, and we, the people of Israel, are the vineyard. What's he saying? Let's go and find out. Like the farmer, God looked after us. He released us from slavery. He saved us from many disasters. But then what did we do? We disobeyed God's laws. There is bloodshed everywhere. We oppress and exploit the poor. Come, my child. Let's go and hear him speak. We kill our own brothers. We worship idols against God's laws. Hey, look over there. He seems to be a prophet. Let's go and listen to what he is saying. Come, let's go. And like the farmer in the field, God will take away the fence of protection and let our enemies upon us. Huh? What are you saying? We offer sacrifices and celebrate all his feasts? This is God who speaks. I despise your feasts. Your singing and dancing revolts me. When you stretch your hands, I turn my eyes away. Your hands are covered with blood. How can we offer sacrifices without staining our hands, without blood? It's not the blood of animals. I see that your hands are covered with the blood of poor people. You burden them with taxes. The rich are exploiting the poor. You took the money intended for poor. Hmm. What you are saying is making sense. Oh, shut up! Watch your tongue, Isaiah! You are going beyond your limits. Turn to God. Return to the God of Israel. What should we do? Stop the oppression. Give justice to the poor. Protect the widows and orphans. Ha! Huh. That's social work, not worship. It's the work of justice that pleases God, not the blood of lambs and bulls. Your hands are stained with blood. Wash yourselves clean. From that day, Isaiah preached the word of God in Jerusalem and its surrounding areas. A huge number of people became his disciples. The Lord God is holy. We must live according to his laws. But which law, Master? There are so many. There is only one law that God gave us. The one God gave us through Moses on Mount Sinai. Hear, O Israel! You shall love God with all your heart, with all your strength. He will purify you from your sins. In the meantime, King Ahaz was facing threats from the neighboring countries. An army of soldiers from Syria were marching towards Judah from the north. Edomites had already crossed the southern border and the Philistines were closing in from the west. Ahaz went to the temple of God Molech and he did the unthinkable. He sacrificed his own son. King Ahaz, the great god of Molech is pleased with you. He asks you to send messengers to the north to his servant and ruler Tiglat Pilesa of Assyria. Thank you. That is the only way. 
Only the king of Assyria can help me now. Now, go ahead. The sacrifice of your son will not be in vain. <laughs> the king of Assyria had become very strong by capturing the nearby nations. But he worshipped idols like God Molech. In the meantime, God sent Isaiah to Ahaz, who was returning to his palace after the sacrifice. King Ahaz? Huh? You are Isaiah, right? Yes, I know what you had been up to. Huh? How do you know? God sees everything. He sent me here to deliver a message. What is it? The Lord is displeased with you. Who told you to sacrifice your own son? Didn't you love him? Huh? You don't know what's going on. We are being attacked from all sides. Only the war god Molech can help us now. God Molech? You fool! Do you think the Lord will abandon his people? Then how is it that we are being attacked from all sides? Do not be afraid. The Lord will take care of Pekka and Razin soon. How soon? They are marching towards us. And by the time your God acts, the cities of Jerusalem will be captured. You need to have faith in our Lord instead of offering sacrifices to those idols. God will never let them destroy Jerusalem, his dwelling place. How can you be so sure? You are just a common man. Hmm. If you are not convinced, then ask for a sign. You can ask for anything you want. King Ahaz was a crooked man. He knew that if he asked for a sign, and if he gets it, then he won't be able to seek the help of King Assyria. If his God doesn't keep the promise, then I lose everything. Huh. I don't need his God. I have the war god Molech on my side. I'll give some reason and send him away. No, I don't need a sign. And I will not test the God of Israel. You can go away and mind your own business. Ha! Huh. You are so crooked. Do you think the Lord wouldn't see that? You know that if you get the sign from Lord, then you won't be able to join hands with that idol-worshipping king of Assyria. Huh. How did he know? The Lord himself is giving you the sign. A young woman will shortly deliver a child whose name will be Emmanuel. Before this child knows the difference between good and evil, your enemies will be destroyed. But because of your wickedness, Assyria, whom you trust now, will turn to attack you. But King Ahaz did not believe Isaiah and sent him away. He sent his messengers to the king of Assyria. The king agreed to help under two conditions. One that he will be a huge tribute to Assyria every year and the second that he will place the idols of his god all over Judah. King Ahaz agreed to those conditions. King Ahaz won the war with the help of Assyrian army, but his country had lost its freedom. Master, the land is filled with idols everywhere. They are offering sacrifices to Assyrian gods even at our temple in Jerusalem. Yes, and they are squeezing the poor to pay the tribute. Hmm. What are we going to do, Master? Judah will be destroyed if this goes on. People have forgotten the Lord, and all of them are worshipping those idols. Idols of God Molech. Don't worry. King Ahaz will die shortly, and after him, a just king will rule this land. He will be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, and Judah will be filled with the knowledge of God. He will destroy all the idols, and he will be kind to the poor. How soon will it happen, Master? Very soon. This will happen sooner than you think. And like Isaiah had predicted, King Ahaz died shortly. His son, Hezekiah, became the new king of Judah. Hezekiah was a kind man and he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord. A new chapter had opened in Isaiah's life. Master, welcome! 
I'm grateful for your presence in this palace. Peace to you, my son. Thanks for coming by, Master. You have such knowledge about God, and I need your advice on many things. Son, I am pleased to be at your service. Master, you know my father? He, he did many things to offend the Lord, our God. Yes, that's true. He didn't hear my advice, and he sought the help of Assyrian gods. The country is ruined now, Master. What should I do? You are a good man, my son. Trust in the Lord. The first thing you should do is to destroy all idols in Judah. Yes, Master. I will send out the orders immediately. A great reform followed. Hezekiah sent out the orders to destroy all the idols in Judah. There! Destroy that! Hezekiah banned idol worship in his kingdom. Hezekiah also stopped paying tribute to the king of Assyria. The Assyrian king were not happy with this, and they sent out an army to attack Judah. <sighs> Your Majesty, the Assyrian army! What happened? The Assyrian army is invading our country! They are destroying all the cities on their way. They are killing everyone. They are not even sparing the women and children. Hmm. They will reach Jerusalem in a few days. My lord, we must do something to stop them. Prepare the army. Get ready for a battle. Minister, you must go and seek advice from Prophet Isaiah. Ask him what is the will of God. But, but my lord, he has gone mad. He's going around naked these days. Huh? He must have some good reason. Now go to him and seek his counsel. Yes, my lord. Hezekiah sent his minister to seek advice from Isaiah. Isaiah was sleeping under a tree that day. Isaiah. Huh? Isaiah, get up and put your clothes. Hezekiah's men are coming to seek your advice. You should tell them. Yes, my lord. Prophet Isaiah, we have come to seek your advice. I know. Did you think that I had gone mad by walking around naked? We... we... My nudity was a sign. It was a warning to Egypt and Ethiopia. A sign that Assyrian army will invade them. They would make all the prisoners walk completely naked. What? Assyrian army will invade Egypt and Ethiopia too? Yes, but you don't have to worry. The Lord God will protect you. He will not let anything happen to Jerusalem, his dwelling place. Thank you, Master. The king will be very happy to hear this. In a few days, the Assyrian army reached outside the gates of Jerusalem. Listen, you fools of Judah! How dare you defy the great king of Assyria! How dare you stop being the tribute? And you destroyed our gods. Surrender, or we will destroy this city. My lord, he's not ready for any treaty. He's pouring out blasphemous. No, what should we do? There is no other way other than to surrender, my lord. At least the lives of our people will be saved. No, we will not surrender. I will not let that evil king rule over our holy city. This is where our Lord God lives. The holy ark is this city. If they take over our land, then they will destroy our temples. But my Lord... No, I will never let that happen. Have mercy on us, Lord. Do not punish us according to our sins. Please, please save us from the Assyrians. Your Majesty. Huh? Prophet Isaiah? You are here. Yes, the Lord God had sent me to deliver this message. Assyria was a rod that I used to punish Judah for her sins. But now their pride and cruelty had exceeded. 
I am going to destroy her. But master, we don't have much time left. They are outside the walls of the city and they will break in by tomorrow. Do not worry. The Assyrian army will not be here tomorrow. God will not let anyone insult his name. Prepare the army. The walls are almost down. We must attack tomorrow at dawn. Give instructions to kill every man and woman inside Jerusalem. Now go! Yes, master. Master! Master! Huh? What happened? Master, the king has sent you a message. What is it? Is it urgent? Yes, master. An army from Babylon. Babylon. Tell me, what happened? An army from Babylon attacked us. Most of our soldiers were killed. What? Yes, master. The king needs all his men to defend Assyria. King has asked you to return immediately. Oh no! Tell the king that we are coming back with the army. We will return right away. Hearing that Babylon had attacked Assyria, the commander took the army and hurried back home. And like God had promised, the Assyrian army returned that night itself. And after that, there were no more wars in the country. As long as Hezekiah lived, the kingdom prospered and everyone lived happily. Father, what happened to Isaiah then? After Hezekiah died, his son Manasseh became the king. He was cruel and he brutally killed Isaiah. Oh no! But he was such a good prophet! Yes, he was. So did you like the story of prophet Isaiah? Yes, Father. Good. Then shall I ask you a few questions? All right. Then tell me the meaning of the name Isaiah. The name Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. Very good, Lucy. What knowledge did he learn from his vision at the temple? Isaiah learned about the holiness of God. He also learned about his sinfulness from the vision at the temple. Very good, George. What was the name of King Ahaz's son? His name was Hezekiah. Correct. Now that's all for today. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of a prophet named Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah? Yes, the prophet who stood alone against a whole nation. Wow! All right, see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Good morning, children. Good Good morning, morning, Father. So, did you like the story of King David I told you yesterday? Yes, Father. Matthew? Yes, Father. Can you tell me the name of David's son who became the king of Israel after he died? Hmm, was it Solomon? That's correct, Matthew. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of the wisest king of Israel, King Solomon. Solomon was the second son born to King David's favorite wife, Bathsheba. The Bible depicts Solomon as the wisest king of Israel. Two Psalms, the Book of Proverbs, Kohelet, Song of Songs, and Wisdom are attributed to him. Even Jesus refers to Solomon's wisdom. Though Solomon was a wise man, idol worship, luxury, and pride caused his downfall. At the time of his death, he could not find any meaning in his life. Solomon is a negative model, an example of worldly wisdom and unaccountable authority that led to his despair and destruction. Wow! Please tell us his story, Father. (laughs) <laughs> yes, Lucy. I was just about to begin. With the help of his mother, Bathsheba, Solomon secured the throne of his father, David. David died soon after, and once he became the king, he eliminated all his enemies one by one. Thank you.
Solomon built a huge and powerful army comprising of thousands of chariots and horsemen. He also had a mighty fleet of hundreds of ships. And one night, when he was sleeping, God spoke to him. Solomon. Huh? Who was that? God? You have found favor with me. You may ask whatever you want. Lord God, grant me a listening heart. Please give me wisdom to rule your people according to your law. I am well pleased with your request. You did not ask for power or prestige. I will make you the wisest man in the world. If you live according to my commandments, your throne will last forever. I will make you rich and powerful. Thank you, God. Thank you. God blessed Solomon with his wishes and he became quite famous for his knowledge and wisdom across all nations. People came from far off places seeking his help. One day, two women came to his palace carrying a child. How can I help you? Lord, please help us. Lord, this woman stole my child. The child she's carrying is mine. Please help me, my lord. No, my lord, she's lying. This child is mine. My lord, we gave birth on the same day, next to each other. But she gave birth to a dead born. And, and when she saw that her child was dead, she took my son and placed her dead child by my side. Please, my lord, please let me have my son back. You? She's lying, my lord. She is a liar. This is my son. It was she who gave birth to a dead child. It is sure that one of you is lying. I'm going to find out who that is. God! A sword! Huh? Your Majesty. Take that child from that woman and cut the baby into two pieces. Let these women have each halves. No! Here, take him. I'm happy even if it's just a half. I won't give her my baby. No! Please stop. No, my lord. Please don't kill my child. I can't watch my son killed. Let my son live with her. Please don't kill him. Please ask the guard to stop. Huh. Now we know who's the true mother of this child. She is his true mother. A mother would always value her child's life more than her own. God, give the child to her and put the other woman in prison. No, please. I'm sorry. Thank you, my lord. Thank you so much. Like this, many people came to Solomon seeking justice and wisdom. Solomon was known as the wisest man in the Middle East. He composed thousands of songs and proverbs. He also began the construction of a grand temple. Excellent craftsmen from the country supervised the construction. He also encouraged writers and they began to write the history of Israel. And a magnificent temple was built in seven years. He founded the schools for politics and law. Scholars from various lands lived at his court. He encouraged discussions among the scholars of law. He also encouraged various science such as botany, zoology and astronomy. People from distant lands came to meet him. One day, the Queen of Sheba, daughter of the Pharaoh, came to visit him. My Lord, I thought people were exaggerating when they spoke about you. But... But... But what, Princess? 
but they didn't tell me even one tenth. You? You are so full of knowledge and wisdom. Thank you, princess. After a few days, Solomon married the Gentile princess. She was not an Israelite, but Solomon wanted to sign treaties of peace with neighboring kings, and he accepted Pharaoh's daughter in return. But the Gentile princes brought their idols and priests along with her to Jerusalem. Solomon built temples and shrines for the gods of his wives. The princes and others started worshipping the idols they brought from their lands. Thus, idol worship started again in Jerusalem. He also started building huge palaces for his wives to live. He, composed thousands he slowly of stopped caring about the welfare of his people and started building temples temple. and fortresses for his Excellent wives. Craftsmen from the country supervised the construction. But, in order to meet the expenses for building all temples and palaces, Solomon started levying heavy taxes on the people. No! Please! Stop! Huh? Get away, you fool! But what are you doing? How am I going to plow my land without my oxen? Please don't take him! I beg you! Move aside, you fool! Ah! You should have thought that before defaulting your taxes! Please! Don't take him! Huh! And if you don't pay the rest of your taxes, then you won't have to worry about plowing the land at all! What happened to our king? He has become so cruel! Lord, please help us! Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Hundreds of thousands of people were forced into slavery for construction of temples. Even Israelites were made slaves along with foreigners. Pull! Pull, you idiot! Ah! I don't know what to do! Our lives have become so miserable! Hmm. God made us free, but our king, our king made us slaves again. Yes! He has become so cruel! Huh? We struggle all day and night for what? For our king and his wives to enjoy? Hush! Lower your voice! You'll lose your head if the supervisor hears you! Who cares? I'm fed up with my life anyway. One day, a man of God, Prophet Ahijah, received a message for Solomon from God. He came to the palace to deliver the message. Who are you? I am Prophet Ahijah. I received a message from God, and I am here to deliver it. What have you done, my king? You have defiled the throne of David. What? How dare you? Calm down. This is the voice that proclaims the word of God. You filled my holy city with idols. But, but didn't I build a beautiful temple for God? And, and what's wrong in building a few temples for my wives to worship? You, you enslaved the people I freed. You denied them justice. I detest your empire. On account of my servant David, I will not strike you down. But after your death, your kingdom will be destroyed. Hmm. Your Majesty, I have delivered the message that God wanted me to. Let me take your leave. Hmm, who cares what happens after my death? I live only once, and I'm going to enjoy this till the end. <laughs> Solomon forgot God's commandments, and he punished everyone who acted against his will. Your Majesty? Yes? Do you remember Hadad, the king of Edom? Yes. My father killed him. What is it now? My lord, his son has come back from Egypt and he's steering the people against you. And you have done nothing about it? How dare he? 
Get him and hang him. Let him suffer the fate of his father. But my lord? You heard what I said. Kill him. That's my order. Like that, Solomon executed everyone who dared to oppose him. But one supervisor of Solomon was very kind to the slaves. Ah, oh, when are we going to get some rest? We've been working for days without sleep. God, please help us. You lazy fools! How dare you take rest? Stand up! Stand up! Or I'll... Stop! I will take care of this. You can go now. Master, we are sorry. Don't worry. Sit down. Huh? Here, have some water. Uh, thank you. I know you are tired, but but you have to finish this by today evening. You know what the king's orders are. He will punish you even more if we don't complete this today. You are so kind to us, master. I wish the king too was like you. Don't worry, my friend. You will get your freedom soon. Here, have some water and let's begin as soon as you are ready. Jeroboam, Solomon's supervisor, was a kind man and he treated the slaves fairly. One day, God sent prophet Ahijah to Jeroboam. Jeroboam! Jeroboam, stop! Huh? Who are you? <sighs> Jeroboam, I am prophet Ahijah. It is God who sent me to meet you. God? But why? He wanted me to deliver his message to you. Huh? But tell me this first. You have seen the condition of Israelites here. What would you have done if you were to become the king? Me? A king? Yes. What would you have done? Hmm. I would. The first thing I would do is to free all the slaves. Ah, that's great. You are such a wise man. And never forget what you just said. What are you saying? I... I don't understand. Jeroboam, here is the God's message to you. This is Israel. I will tear this up and give ten tribes to you. For the sake of my servant David, I will give Judah to his descendants. What? Could this be true? Thank you, God. Thank you. When Solomon came to know that Jeroboam was being kind to his slaves, he really got angry. Your Majesty? Bring Jeroboam immediately! How dare he provoke revolt among these slaves! But my lord, it seems that he was told to do so by a prophet. What? A prophet? Yes, my lord. Prophet Ahijah is with him. Anyone who dare to oppose me must die. Anyone who raises a finger against me will die. My lord, if you do so, then there won't be many alive. What? What do you mean? Yes, my lord. People are dissatisfied. Even the soldiers have started revolting against us. Ha! Huh. I don't care about that. Every opposition must be crushed. I'm not going to tolerate any rebellion against me. Get Jeroboam immediately. I'm going to hang him for this. I'm sorry, Jeroboam, but you have to leave now. But... but... The king has sent his soldiers for you. If they find you, then they will not hesitate to kill you. But I was just being kind to the slaves. What's wrong with that? Our king is doomed. He will not understand this. You must escape now, and you must return to Jerusalem only after his death. Yes, prophet. I will do as you say. 
Fearing the king, Jeroboam fled to Egypt. He stayed there for many years and waited for Solomon to die. As years passed, opposition increased and Solomon adopted severe measures to suppress the rebellion. Hmm, is it true that the empire is about to collapse? If that's the case, then what have I gained? What good was my rule? Forget the empire. What did I earn with my life? Palaces, feasts, thousands of beautiful women. I got everything I wanted, but still, nothing matters in the end. There is no difference between me and a slave. We both will die in the end. How fast do we pass through this life? Hmm. I was able to stop all my enemies, but who can stop death? Vanity of vanities. All this vanity. A life that ends in death has no meaning. Oh my God. What if I have to give an account of my life after death? The pleasures of this life will pass away like a flash. I thought I was wise, but in reality, I was an utter fool. I forgot the Lord, and who will forgive me now? Solomon died at the age of 70. He ruled Israel for 40 years. His son succeeded him, but he was more cruel and more oppressive, and he did not possess the wisdom of his father. All the tribes revolted against him, except Judah. When Jeroboam returned from Egypt, people accepted him as their king. Thus, Solomon's empire was split into two, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Wow! Did you all like the story? Yes, father. Hmm, that's good. Now let me ask you a few questions from the story. Shall I? Yes, father. All right. Now who can tell me how Solomon became the king? Solomon was the son of King David's favorite wife, Bathsheba. King David had promised Bathsheba that her son will rule the kingdom after him. So when he died, Solomon became the king. Very good, Lucy. What was the blessing that Solomon received from God? God blessed Solomon with wisdom and he became the wisest man in the world. Hmm, that's correct. And who did he marry? He married Princess Sheba, the daughter of Pharaoh of Egypt. That's correct. Now tell me why people got discontent with Solomon's rule. Me! Me! Yes, yes Lucy. Lucy. Solomon started building huge temples for idol worship and large palaces for his wives to live. For meeting the expenses, he started levying heavy taxes on the people. This made people unhappy. And was there any other reason? Yes, Father. He also enslaved many people, including Israelites. These slaves worked at the construction sites without rest for building the palaces. This further angered the people. Name the prophet who delivered God's message to Solomon. It was Prophet Ahijah. Very good, Matthew. And what was the name of Solomon's supervisor, who was kind to his slaves? It was Jeroboam. Correct again. Now that's all for today. We'll meet again tomorrow for our next story. And whose story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Hmm. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of Prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah? Who was that? When Israel became corrupt with the authority, God sent prophets as speakers on his behalf. Elijah, the hero of our next story, is the first such prophet. 
Wow! We are so eager to hear his story. <laughs> I'm sure you are. It's time for us to leave. We'll meet again tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. Hmm. Are you bored, Matthew? Yes, I am. Huh. Hey, look over there. Wow, it's such a large fish. It looks like it will swallow all the other fishes here in the stream. Is this a small whale? Ha <laughs> ha! No, Matthew. This is not a whale. A whale lives in the sea and it's way, way bigger than this. Hmm. In the story Father John told us yesterday, he told us that a whale swallowed Prophet Jonah, right? Yes. A whale is the biggest fish in the sea. Is it bigger than the elephants? Hmm. It's very, very big than an elephant. And is it bigger than a dinosaur? Haha. <laughs> yes, Matthew. It's much bigger than a dinosaur. Oh. Now I know how Jonah could live inside the fish for three days. Hey, look! George is coming. Hello, George. Hello, Matthew. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Didn't Father John come yet? He told he will be telling us a story today. Oh, there he is. Hello, kids. I have brought something for you. Wow! It's a coloring book. And it also contains the stories from the Bible. Look here, this one has the story of creation in it. Ha <laughs> ha! Look here, it's Adam. Yes, and there's Eve too, here. Can I get one, Father? Of course, I brought these for you. Thank you, Father. And here, Lucy, this one's for you. Wow, this one has the story of Cain and Abel in it. Thank you, Father. And George, here, this is for you. The story of Noah. I love a story. Thank you, Father. Remember, kids, you must read the book while coloring the pages. These books will help you remember the Bible stories that I have been telling you. Thank you, Father. All right, now come on, let's sit there. Everyone ready for today's story? Today I'm going to tell you the story of Job, a wealthy trader. A long time ago, in the land of Uz, there lived a man named Job. He was the richest man in the Middle East and he was also a royal servant to God. Job was very kind to the poor and never hesitated in helping them when they needed. Master! Master! Oh, hello Jacob. How have you been? No, I am in trouble, Master. I... I need your help. What happened, Jacob? Tell me. Master, my daughter is sick and I think she's going to die. Huh? Come, let's go to your house and let me take a look at her. Thank you, Master. Please come with me. There, that's my house. Come, let's go in and take a look at her. There she is. She, she has been lying like that for two weeks now. Oh, she's got a very high temperature. Didn't you take her to the physician? I, I... I'm sorry, Master. We couldn't afford to take her to the physician, as we didn't have any money with us. What? Why did you come to me, Jacob? Did you ever think that I would hesitate to help you? I'm sorry, Master. We already owe you a lot of money, and I was ashamed to borrow again from you. Hmm. You shouldn't have thought so. Anyways, come, let's take her to the physician. There is no time to waste. Don't worry, Jacob. She's going to be all right. 
the physician is looking at her. And she will be well soon. I hope she is going to be okay. Master Job, it's so nice of you to bring this poor girl to my place. That's nothing. But tell me, how is she? Her mother and father is anxious to know her condition. Oh, she's going to be all right. You brought her just in time to give her the treatment. She needs a few days rest, but she'll be fine in a week's time. Thank you, Lord. You saved our daughter. Thank you, Master. It's because of you that our child is saved. It's all right, Jacob. Come on, stand up. Job helped the poor and needy whenever he could. God had blessed Job with health and prosperity. He had seven sons and three daughters. How many men did we feed today? The dining hall was full today also, my master. At this rate, we will need a larger hall pretty soon. Hmm, that's good. God has blessed us abundantly and we must share it with the poor. Sir, I appreciate your intentions. But if we continue to just give away free food, then the poor people will become lazy and they will never work at all. Hmm. Why don't we ask them to work in our fields and warehouses? That's a brilliant idea, sir. I will ask our men pass orders today itself. Food for work. It's a great idea, sir. God has blessed us and our master job. Yes, there's no question about it. His business is going so well and he also ensures that everyone around him are happy. Did you hear about his orders yesterday? Yes, I did. It was so kind of him to offer work in return for food for the poor. No other rich man in our kingdom is as kind as him. Yes, may God bless him and his children. Job owned thousands of ships through which he traded with distant lands. He brought gold and spices from abroad and sold it to Arabs and Egyptians. Job also had thousands of cattle, sheep and donkeys. Because of God's blessings, he was the richest man in the Middle East. Almighty God, thank you for all your blessings. Please forgive me and my children for our sins. Come on, dear. It's getting late. We have to reach there before the celebration starts. I'm coming. Huh? Is there something wrong? You don't look all right. Hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling rather down today. Master! Master! What happened, Jonathan? Why are you running? Master! Your sons! What happened to my sons? What happened, Jonathan? Tell us. Your sons and daughters, they were celebrating at their elder brother's house. They were hit by a huge tornado, Master. Oh no! Everyone was killed in the storm. Only I survived. I'm sorry, Master. Oh, my children. Huh? Who is that? Isn't he one of our men from the farms? Master! Master! Tell me, what is it? Quickly. I just got the news that my children have died. Master, the Midianites, they, they attacked us and took all our cattle and sheep. Huh? Wasn't there anyone to stop them? They killed all our men, Master. Only I managed to escape. One by one, Job's men came to his house announcing terrible news. Master! Our warehouses were burned down. Many of our men died trying to put out the fire. They robbed us. They attacked our caravans. They took all our camels and donkeys. What about our men? They killed all our men too. Only I managed to escape. Master, our ships. I don't know what happened, but all of them were destroyed in a storm. Job lost everything he had that day, including his children. But Job never lost his faith in Lord in spite of so much suffering. My children! God, please tell me what's going on. God, are you praying to him even now? 
Is this the reward that you got for serving him faithfully all these years? Dear, calm down. You shouldn't be talking like that. Calm down. You are such a fool for praying to him. Huh. In the Lord who gave us everything. And now he took everything back. We should praise his name and never complain. All this while, we had been receiving his blessings from God. Now, we must be ready to accept the pains as well. Yes, you go ahead and praise him. I'm never going to praise your God. Your God who took the lives of my children. God, please tell me why you are doing this. Job then tore his robe away, shaved his head, and sat on the ground covering his body with ashes. Lord, and Lord has taken away. Blessed in the name of Lord. In all this while, never did Job blame God for what had happened. But Job's hardship were far from over. After a few days, Job was struck by leprosy. The disease was so terrible that his whole body had started to stink. Oh, it's itching so badly. Huh? It's stinking here. Be patient, dear. It's all happening according to his will. How can you praise your God in spite of all this? Your God has been so cruel to us. Why don't you curse him and die? I am almost like a dead man. Even if I die and my flesh withers away, I will praise the Lord. You and your God. You can do whatever you want. I'm leaving you. God. Hearing about the misfortunes of Job, three of his friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar came to see him. Oh my God, what a sight. Come in, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, you have come too. Job, what's happening to you? My God, is this the same rich and famous Job of Middle East? Oh, I can't stand the sight. Job's friends couldn't stand the sight of Job's sufferings, and in pain, they tore their robes open. They sat near Job for seven days in silence. They wept for him, for they could see the pain Job was going through. And at the end of seven days, Ah, oh Lord, I'm tired. I cannot go on like this. Please let me die. Let me die so that I can get relief from this pain. My friend, we understand your pain. Why are you losing your heart when you were the one who strengthened the hearts of many people? How can you lose your courage in this time of trouble? God will never allow a just man to suffer. You have no idea of my pain. Look at my skin. My whole body has become an open wound. I don't have any strength left. And I'm hopeless about the future. Do you think our God's will is on there? Maybe your children died for the sins they had committed. But you should never lose your hope. If you are pure and upright, then God will surely answer your prayers. No, strangling me to death would have better than this never-ending torture. A man's life on earth is merely a slavery. I'm longing for my death now. Your desire to die is a proof of the sins you might have committed. God will never be unfair. You should ask your forefathers. They will tell you the same from their experience. You tell me, how can a man ever be just before God who has ever defied him and prospered? I hate my life. Life and death, it's all one to me. I am now declaring this openly. God destroys the wicked as well as the innocents. Huh? Just. Just leave me alone. 
Let me breathe freely for a moment. All these speeches is not going to justify you. What do you know about God? Maybe, just maybe, you haven't received one-tenth of the punishment you deserve. Just repent, my friend. Repent and return to Lord. Raise your hands in prayer and you will receive His blessings. Ha! Huh. All these speeches of wisdom, you are repeating the same old things that others have said. I know those too. I am innocent. Yet you laugh at me. Tell me. Tell me what wrong have I done? I was like the eyes to the blind, legs to the lame, and a father to the needy. I saved the poor and the orphans. I destroyed the wicked people. This misery is a proof of your wickedness. You took the coat of a poor man in a pledge. You snatched the bread from the hungry. You exploited widows and oppressed the orphans. Do you still claim to be just? And by now, Job was getting really confused. He did not understand what was happening to him, and he thought that God was punishing him without a reason. Lies! Lies! They are all lies! Even my friends are accusing me now. I want him to come down and answer me. And suddenly, Job had a vision. And in his vision, God answered Job's questions. Huh? Where am I? Job, who are you to question me and challenge my designs? I will ask you a few questions and you should try answering me. Where were you when I founded the earth? You say you have the knowledge. You answer me. Who set the limits for the sea? Will the sun rise if you demand? Do you show the birds their way in the sky? Do you know the depths of the sea and the width of the earth? Do you know how many stars are there in the sky? I... I am sorry. I don't know. If you do not know such simple things, then how would you know about my plans? I'm sorry, my lord. I take back everything I had said. I repent for everything. I was testing Job's faith, and even in sufferings, he remained faithful to me. My friend, please forgive me for what I had said. Please, pray to God for us. God restored Job's fortunes. He was blessed with many children, and he lived for a long time and witnessed many of his generations. And that was a story. Father, I have a doubt. What is it, Lucy? Did Job lose his faith in God when he was sick? No, Lucy, but Job was thrown into a bitter eternal conflict. On one side, he knew how God was just and kind. And on the other hand, he knew that he was innocent and didn't deserve to be punished like that. His faith in the kindness of God had made his sufferings even more painful. Job firmly believed that it was God who was punishing him, apparently for no reason. He complains to God, but God doesn't respond. And this made him even more confused and sad. Is that why God came and cleared his doubts? Yes, that's why he spoke to Job in his vision. The moment Job heard what God said, he fell silent. It was not because he understood the reason for his suffering, but because he learned that God's ways are beyond his understanding. But doesn't Bible teaches us that the suffering is the result of sins? Not always, Lucy. Look at Isaiah the prophet. He was a just man. But didn't he suffer for the sins that Israelites had committed? Huh, yes. Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross for the sins of the world, is the greatest example of suffering the just men had to face. Now I understand. Thank you, Father. 
All right. Now shall I ask you a few questions? Where did Job live? He lived in the land of Uz. Correct, Matthew. How many children did he have? He had seven sons and three daughters. Who can tell me the name of three friends who came to visit Job when he was sick? They were Eliphaz, Bildad, and 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 Zophar. Correct, both of you. Now I want you all to repeat this verse with me. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Bless be the name of Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Bless be the name of Lord. Very good, children. That's all for today. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of Tobit. Who was he? He lived a long time ago in the city of Nineveh. He had a son named Tobias. Who was protected by an angel? An angel! Wow! Ha ha ha! I will tell you the story tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye. Goodbye, Father. Matthew, Matthew, open the door. What is it? Are you ready yet? We are getting late for the school. It's Sunday. Why don't you let me sleep for some time? Come on, Matthew. George will be waiting for us there. Why is he waiting for us? Doesn't he know that there is no classes on a Sunday? Oh, you forgot. We have Father John's Bible classes today. Don't you remember? Father John's classes? Oh, how could I forget that? Give me a minute. He always keeps forgetting things. I'm ready. Come, what are you waiting for? So it's me who is keeping you waiting now, huh? Come, Lucy. We don't have much time yet. Father John will be waiting for us. All right, I'm coming. Where's Tiger and Jimmy? They must be around here. Jimmy, Tiger, where are you guys? Oh, there they are. Come on guys, it's getting late. Let's go to the church. What's taking them so long? It's getting late. Don't worry, George. They will be here soon. They should have been here 15 minutes ago. There they are. Good morning. Good morning, father. Guys, why were you late? It's because of me. I overslept and forgot about the classes. Mm. Thanks, Matthew. Normally you would have blamed me. Matthew is a good boy. That's why he didn't blame you. Father, weren't you going to tell us the story of Prophet Zechariah today? Yes, George. Why don't you sit down and we will begin. The name Zechariah means The Lord remembered. Zechariah is known for his visions. In the previous episode, we saw how Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, destroyed Jerusalem and took thousands of Israelites enslaved to Babylon. Those who were exiled settled down in different places. Some of them sat and wept by the river Babylon. Hmm. How long are we going to mourn like this? Do you think we should start worshiping the gods of Babylon? Looks like they're more powerful than our god. No way. Our god is the one true god. We should never forget him during the time of hardship. Yes. It's because of the sins we have committed that we have to endure the suffering. We will keep praying to our Lord. Rightly said, dear. Let's keep praying. In the meantime, the poor people who were left in Jerusalem used to come and weep over the ruins of their temple. This was the temple of our Lord. This pillar, this pillar was made during the times of Solomon. This piece used to be our altar. 
Oh, the Lord has punished us severely for our sins. Don't worry, Father. We will build this temple again someday. Yes, my son. Someone will come and help us rebuild this great temple. In BC 539, King Cyrus captured Babylon and issued orders to free all the Israelites to return to their homeland. Brothers, brothers, there's some great news. Our captivity is over. Joshua, is it true? Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> God had heard our prayers. Yes, what the Lord had promised through prophets has come true. It feels like, it feels like a dream. Come, let's go and pack our things. We will leave at dawn tomorrow. The exiled Israelites returned to Jerusalem under the leadership of their high priest, Joshua. They traveled for many days through the hills and the deserts. But when they finally arrived at the city, their hearts were broken seeing the condition of their temple. Oh my God, is this the condition of our holy temple? What have they done to our city? This place was so beautiful. Brothers, do not worry. We will rebuild the city and the temple slowly. Today, we shall pitch tents and live in them. Joshua, what about the temple? We build an altar tomorrow and offer sacrifices to the Lord. We start rebuilding the temple from tomorrow. The next day, they made a small altar in the midst of ruins and offered the sacrifices. Lord, please accept our sacrifice. Please help us in rebuilding this temple to its former glory. How are we going to build the temple now? We don't have any money with us. Yes, we don't even have bread to eat. Where do you think will the money come from? Let each family contribute as much as they can. We will start with those and don't worry about the rest. The Lord will show us a way. They put together whatever money they could find and laid the foundations of the temple. Lord, with your blessing, here we are laying the foundations of the temple. But even though the foundation was laid, the construction of temple didn't progress anywhere because of poverty of the people. That was the time when God sent another prophet to Israel, Prophet Zechariah. Repent and return to the Lord. Leave your evil ways and God will be kind to you. Who is that? Isn't that Zechariah, son of Edo? Hush. I think he is a prophet. Let's listen to what he says. Your fathers didn't listen to the words of God spoken through prophets. That's why they were punished. Don't be stubborn like them. Listen to what I have to say. We are listening. Please tell us what you have got to say. Hmm. Listen to me. I have received visions from God and I will tell you about those. In this vision, there was a man riding a red horse standing in a grove of myrtle trees. Behind him were red, brown and white horses. The angel of the Lord explained that these horses were sent throughout the earth and found the world at peace and rest. But Israel was not at rest and peace. In fact, it had been exiled for 70 years and Jerusalem was in ruins. God sympathized with the Israelites and they declared, I will return to Jerusalem with mercy and there my house will be rebuilt. My towns will again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again choose Zion. The message of this vision is that God was angry at the nations of the world which destroyed Israel and that he would bless and restore Israel again. In this vision, Zechariah saw four horns and four craftsmen. When asked, the angel was clear in explaining the meaning of these symbols. These horns represent the nations trying to destroy Israel. The craftsmen holding the saw 
have come out to cut these horns of the nations who tried to harm his people. The prophecy shows that God raises up powers to destroy those people who is against his land and his people. In this vision, Zechariah saw a man with a measuring line go and measure Jerusalem to find out how long it is. When Zechariah asks him where he's going, the man replied, I'm going to measure the city of Jerusalem. The city is to remain unwalled because of the great number of people and cattle in it. The Lord will protect her as a wall of fire and he shall be the glory of Jerusalem. This is an incredible prophetic statement because Zechariah was seeing his visions and giving his messages to the returning exiled of Israel who were in the process of building a wall around Jerusalem. The vision was showing that there would be a day when Jerusalem would grow to vast proportions and not need a wall because of God's protection. Though this vision, God showed him his blessings on restored Israel. The first three visions pictured Israel being freed from captivity, her expansion, and the prosperity of the land. However, in the fourth vision, God is showing him the eternal state of Israel, which is in need of cleansing from sin and reinstatement as a priestly nation. This vision is a bit different from the others, and there is no question about it. The characters are identifiable. We see Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest who returned along with Israelites from Babylon. Joshua is seen in filthy clothes because of his sin, but the angel commands other angels to take it off from Joshua. The filthy clothes represent his sins, and by lifting them away, it shows God's forgiveness and love. Once forgiven and cleansed by the Lord, the angel had instructions for Joshua in order to retain his new form. He said, If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirement, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts. It meant that if Israel remained this clean and as a priestly state, God was promising that Joshua would rule Israel in days to come. In this vision, Zechariah saw a gold lampstand with a bowl of oil at the top, from which seven lamps were burning on the stand. Then there were two olive trees standing on each side of the lampstand with two gold pipes that continually supplied oil to the stand. These seven lights represent the eyes of the Lord and they light the whole world. The olive trees represent the anointed ones or priests who stand before the Lord and connect him with the people. The whole vision is connected to the rebuilding of the temple. It showed him that they will be able to finish the construction of the temple with the help of abundant supply of the Holy Spirit. The last three visions showed Zechariah about the judgment for the sins in Israel and on their enemies. In the sixth vision, Zechariah saw a flying scroll, 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. The scroll was not rolled up, but flying open so that one could read both sides. The angel explained to him what it meant. This is the curse that is going out over the whole land. For according to what it says on one side, every thief will be banished. And according to what it says on the other side, everyone who swears falsely will be banished. It will enter the house of the thief and the house of him who swears falsely by my name. The vision is a call to righteousness in Israel and the scroll represents the word and law of the Lord that judges the sinful. God desires that his people and his land remain holy. In this vision, Zechariah saw an ephah, which is a measuring basket for grain, whose lid, when lifted, was a woman sitting inside. The angel told him, that the woman represented wickedness and he pushed the wickedness back into the basket and shut the lid. 
Then Zechariah saw two women with the wind in their wings like a stork, and they lifted the basket up into the air. When Zechariah asked where the basket was being taken, he was told that it was being taken to Babylonia for building a house for it. Babylon is the place of ancient idolatry, so it was an apt location for carrying out the idolatry from Israel. So this vision in short meant the removal of Israel's sins and rebellion against God. Then Zechariah saw four chariots coming out from between two mountains. In this instance, the mountains symbolize the righteous, divine judgment of God against sin. The chariots were going to execute his judgment. The first chariot had red horses. The second one had black horses. The third had white ones. And the fourth was dappled. It has been suggested that the colors represent red for war and bloodshed, black for death, white for triumph, and dappled ones stood for pestilence. The angels then told Zechariah, These are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord. The one with the black horses is going towards the north country. The one with the white horse was going towards the west. And the dappled one was going towards the south. They were sent throughout the world. So in short, this vision showed the divine judgment of God towards the Gentile nations. The Lord will wipe away the wickedness and injustice from this land and purify you. Those messages are wonderful. Yes, he is a true prophet. All that he says is going to come true. Just like the words of Amos and Isaiah. The people accepted the teaching of Zechariah. Heeding his advice, the people of Jerusalem completed the construction of the temple in a few years. And Joshua was coronated as the high priest of Israel. The Lord appoint you as the priest and the king of people. Zechariah also made several prophecies, and all of these came true. He had prophesied about a future king who arrives on a donkey. Many of them were fulfilled by Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Wow, that was such an amazing story. Yes, it was. So, you like the story? We loved it, Father. Shall I ask you a few questions then? Yes, Father. All right. Now, who can tell me the meaning of the name Zechariah? It means the Lord remembers. Correct, Matthew. Why were the Israelites who returned from Babylon sad when they reached Jerusalem? The temple of Jerusalem was in ruins and their city had been destroyed. The people were sad when they saw this. Good. What was Zechariah's first vision? The first one was the horsemen among the myrtle trees. Good. And George, what was the second? It was the four horns and four craftsmen. Right. And Matthew, the next. Hmm. It was the surveyor with the measuring line. Correct. Now who can tell what were the next visions that Zechariah had? The next one was about Joshua, the high priest. Then it was the golden lampstand and two olive trees. And the next was the flying scroll. Then it was the woman in the basket. And the last one was about the flying chariot. <laughs> Excellent kids. I'm so proud of you. Hmm, that's all for today. I'll tell you the story of another prophet tomorrow. A prophet in a whale's belly. <laughs> what? Yes, I will tell you the story of a prophet who ran away from God. As his punishment, he had to live for three days inside a whale. Who was it, Father? His name was Jonah. Why did he run away from God? No, not today. I will tell you all about his story tomorrow. It's getting late. We must leave now. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.